Hey folks, I wanted to talk to you just briefly about situational hypermetabolism. I know that's a mouthful of a word, but if you read my cycle diet book or taken the cycle diet course, we've talked about situational hypermetabolism before on many fronts, most of them nutritional fronts. Uh, most of them how underfeeding combined with well-timed overfeeding and refeeding as in cheat days, etc., produces a situational hypermetabolic effect, which increases fat burning via thermogenesis, but also helps optimize metabolism. But here's the thing, you gotta stop seeing and treating the body as some kind of linear equation because it's not how it works. Now let's look, I'm gonna give you an example on the real world training front in terms of people who think of the body as being a calories in, calories out, mathematical equivalency, miss how the body really really and truly works now i'm going to give you a couple examples here for the longest time in the last few years i've been doing training in complexes from my hard gainer solution to my physique after uh, 50 program to other programs that i've sort of um, tweaked uh, coming out of there coming out of those two programs and so it's been years like three, four, maybe even longer years since I've done a straight sets body part, you know, one body part per day program. Now I recently went back to that kind of training and I went from six days of training per week down to five days training per week. Now here's what I want you to learn. About two weeks into that, two and a half weeks into that, I'm training one less day per week. All right, so that's one less day burning calories and all the rest. Within a couple of weeks, many people were asking me why my face was so lean. Am I losing? Am I ripping up? Am I dieting? Am I losing weight? All these kinds of things. People who look at the body as a linear equation, mathematical calories in, calories out, are never going to understand the biochemical and hormonal qualitative adaptations that the body goes through when sometimes less is more. So I dropped one training day per week, totally, went from doing complexes, which are longer training orientations, more metabolically demanding, to doing single sets with longer rests, but that change in doing more volume in one day uh, produced adoptive responses in my body, hormonally and, bio, uh, and biochemically, which themselves led to situational hypermetabolism. In other words, I started burning fat really faster um, by training with less volume and training less day per week. On the flip side of that, protege Andy Sinclair, you've seen Andy now all over my, my pages, you know, uh, eight pack abs six, uh, all year round, et cetera, et cetera. He was doing the opposite. He was recently on a couple of body part training programs, not complexes and he was doing single body parts per day on a couple programs specifically designed for him. And he recently, right around the same time I made a change, he made a change and went back to the Hard Gainer Solution program, the book that you see behind me there. He's gone back to those workouts, which is composed of biplexes and triplexes. And what happened there? He noticed the exact same thing, even though training, um, his training is more um, sporadic days per week on the hard gainer. He trains anywhere from three to five days uh, per week. He was training on a solid five days per week, but exact same feedback. He checks in with me. He says, oh my goodness, like after a couple of weeks, my hunger is through the roof. What I can eat on my cheat day is through the roof. I'm in situational hypermetabolism. It's so cool when you see this. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because all these wannabe coaches and gurus out there who think everything's a mathematical equation are never going to understand how specific qualitative adaptations in response of stimulus, qualitative adaptations, hormonal and biochemical, can in and of themselves um, stimulate metabolism and fat burning. So we've covered that with the cycle diet on the eating front how regular underfeeding with well-timed overfeeding um, induces fat loss and hypermetabolism and things like that. But on the training front, it can work the exact same way. Like I said, I went to doing more volume, more days per week to less volume and less days per week. And the result of that, because of the change in my body and the hormonal and biochemical 
uh, st stimulation that it produced, I ended up with more fat loss and uh, situational hypermetabolism. Now, situational hypermetabolism doesn't last forever, but you do get a lot of bang for your buck. You can lose a lot of fat up front, and uh, you can keep that off provided you know everything else stays in order, like your diet stays regimented and things like that. So I just wanted to drop a quick line, a quick video about situational hypermetabolism in the non-linear body. The non-linear body meaning it's not about I ate this many calories so I have to burn this many off. Ooh, I'm not active today. I'm going to get fat. Ooh, it's a, it's a non-training day. I have to eat less carbs or I have to eat less calories because I'm not training today. I've covered all that nonsense before and that's what it is, complete and utter nonsense. So I wanted to give you a couple real world examples of how situational hypermetabolism even works with the type of training you're doing. So it's not always more is better, better is better. So that's situational hypermetabolism in the non-linear body and all of us have non-linear bodies. Hope you benefited from this and stay tuned and I'll be bringing you more in uh, future videos.